So in the last video we looked at the basic setup for Ada Boost, and in this video we will step through an example um, slowly through each of the steps in the boosting algorithm. So as an example we will look at, um, at this classification problem. Um, it's a binary classification task and we're trying to figure out um, whether a point belongs to class one or class two and our training data is this kind of moon shaped with class one here and class minus one there okay and again in this example like we did with um, with the uh, boosting for regression we're going to use as our basic model our kind of building block as our weak classifier we're going to use a decision tree stub so that's a decision tree with um, just a single split, the simplest decision tree that we can have. So that will be our, our weak classifier. So let's just step through the algorithm and see what happens. So step number one, initialize training item weights, WN equal to one for all training items. So that just basically says, look at all your training items and they're all equally um, important at this point in time which is basically before we start. So let's say that training item is training item, I don't know, 25. Okay, then the weight for that training item is just set to one. Okay, and all of the training items are equally important. So we set um, the same weight for all of them. And now we go into um, step number two here, and we go into the first iteration. So B is equal to one. Um, at this point, okay. The first step um, in this inner loop, uh, the first step here is fit a model f1 x theta1 so that it minimizes the classification error rate weighted by wn. At this point, all the weights are equal. So this step really just means take a take this data set and fit this model to it. Okay. So we're training. Uh, a decision tree stub, okay, which is just just as a single split, okay, that's our model, and I ask you just fit this model to the data set with um, with with this moon shape, okay, and you can go back and watch the decision tree lectures to figure out how to do that. It's not um, it's not difficult. Um, in this case, this very very simple decision tree with just a single um, split asks is x2 uh, less than or equal to um, this value here, maybe 0 0.26, 0 0.26. If that is true, okay, then it means we're in this bottom plot here, and then we assign whatever lands in that region, we assign that to y equal to one. If that is false, then we know we're in this top region here, and then any point there we assign y is equal to minus one. So this is the output of the model f1 with input x and parameters theta1. Theta1 in this case just summarizes um, the tree structure here. So we're done with step A. Okay, we're in iteration B1, but we're done with step A. Now let's check what is the next step. So step B says set the model weight using the error term um, epsilon. And I will explain this, spe um, this step in a lot more detail in just a few slides. But just intuitively for now, this lambda b, currently we're looking at lambda 1, that will be a big weight if my classifier does well. In other words, if it has a small error. And it will be small if I have a rubbish classifier. If my classifier is not doing that well, then I will have a very small um, uh, lambda. Okay, so in this case, the classifier, let's look, where is it messing up on my training items? Um, it's messing up here, it's messing up those points, those points, those points, and those points, okay? But overall, it's correctly classifying on the training data all of those points. So um, I checked, and the lambda that's assigned here, lambda 1, is equal to 0 0.87, which is an okay number. Okay, now we're done with step B. Now we go on to step number C. And here it says, update the training item weights. And what happens here, um, just intuitively for now, and then we'll, we'll, we'll look at the details a bit later on. If my training items are correct, okay? So for instance, these training items, these training items, 
then I'm going to adjust their weights. I'm going to change their weights so that their weights become smaller. I'll show that a little bit later on, but you can already see here we're going to um, multiply the weights by uh, taking the exponential of minus lambda b, and that value will be smaller than one. Okay, so we're going to update the, we're going to change the weights. We're going to take the column values, which is just one, and we're going to multiply them with a value that's smaller than one. That's if the classification is correct. If my correction is incorrect, then I do exactly the opposite. I take the current weights from those points where I, I made a mistake and made an incorrect prediction, and I actually multiply them with something that's larger than one. So I'm changing my weights so that they become bigger. Okay, and on this plot, what I did was I indicated the sizes of the weights with um, basically the size of the data points. So for example, these blue spots here, the, um, the blue squares, they're obviously a lot larger than these blue um, points here because their weight have been increased. And why? Because if I put my boundary here and I say everything down here belongs to class number one, then obviously I'm making a mistake on these blue points. Similar, um, these three blue points, I'm also making mistakes. And in the top region, I'm making big mistakes on these points and these points. So their weights have also been um, increased. So what I will do now, so now let's say I'm done with this iteration, I've updated the weights. What's going to happen now is I'm going to go back and I'm going to go into the second iteration. And in that second iteration, I'm again going to fit a very, very simple uh, decision tree stub. But now, instead of just blindly trying to minimize my classification errors, I'm going to uh, put a weight on each of my training items. And specifically, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and make sure that for these points that where I had a, um, a larger weight, I'm going to put more emphasis on getting them right. So before we go on to the next slide, which actually serves the output of F2, our second model in the second iteration, maybe you can try and guess where this model will put the, the, the boundary. So basically it's saying, uh, you know what, these points, these points, these points, and these points, they're super important. Try and put a boundary to get them right. I also care about these other points, but I've adjusted their weights that I don't care about them nearly as much as these points that I messed up on. So F2, our second model, really wants to get these points right. Um, now remember when you're fitting a, a decision tree, you're basically going to say, should I split x1 or should I split x2? And then um, if I'm considering splitting x1, I need to decide, am I going to split it there, 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 there. Um, if I'm going to split x2, where am I going to split it this way? Um, okay, so where do you think is a good point to put a split so that you get most of the um, these um, bigger weighted points, where do you think is a good split um, to get those points right? This is the output we get. So we're in the second iteration, so we're in b equals to 2, and this is the output from the second model that we train. So f2 input x, um, the decision pre parameter is given by theta2, and the model decided to put the decision boundary right about here. Okay, so let's just go back quickly to the previous slide and just see why it put the decision boundary here. So remember what this model is trying to do is it's trying to get, it's really trying to get these points uh, right. It's also looking at the others, but it's, it's caring most about these points. And what it decides to do in the next slide, you, you can remember, is it tries, it puts a decision boundary around here. Okay. And then what it says is, it says, everything on this side is class one, in other words, red, and everything on this side is class minus one, in other, um, in other words, blue. If it does that, right, if it does that, it means that it gets all of these points right, okay? It gets all of these points right, because they're classified as red. It means and it gets all of these points right, also classified as, as red. It makes a mistake on these three points, okay? But it's still getting I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 points um, of those weighted most. It's still getting all of those um, right. Okay, so 
um, you can go and try and find a different uh, decision boundary which would give you uh, a better score on those points. But I think um, the algorithm is doing pretty well here. Okay, so this is the this is the decision boundary. It's still making mistakes, like I said. It's still making mistakes on on those three points. Okay, so to get this plot, we went through all the steps. We um, fit the model F two to the weighted um, training points, weighted by the weights um, obtained on the previous slide. We then figure out how good a model is this. We um, figure out the model weight lambda b, and in my simulation. Um, I think the, the value for this specific model was 0 0.54, okay? And that's less than on the previous slide. Uh, you can go back and check. And the reason is simply that this model is making more mistakes than the, the model on the previous slide, okay? And then again, what we do finally in step C is we update the weights, okay? We update the training item weights. So now what we do is we go and look again at our plot, okay? And we say, listen, where are you still making mistakes? Now we can see that these three points, they got a very, very big weight. And the reason for that is these three points were, um, um, were classified incorrectly by the first classifier and in the second classifier, they're still classified incorrectly, okay? So their weights get even bigger, okay? Um, these points, these points down here, they're getting very small because they've been correctly classified by both the first and the second classifier. Okay, similar, similarly, these these points here. These points, they were classified correctly in the first classifier, but now when we update the weights, they're actually classified incorrectly, right? Because they're labeled as as class one, where where they're actually class minus one. These points here, these points here, and these points here, remember they were misclassified by the first uh, classifier. They're now correctly classified, but we still keep um, a bit of weight assigned to them because we know they're difficult training points, but they do get smaller from, um, from the previous weights. Okay, and what we will do now, we will update the weights, so we'll be done with step C, and then we'll go on to the third classifier. And the third classifier will now look at the weighted points with these weights. So the third classifier will really, really, really care about these three points. It will care a little bit more about these points, and it will care not that much about these points and these points. So this is the output from the third classifier. Okay, so we're in the third iteration now. Um, B is equal to three. And this is the output from the, from the th this third classifier, you can see that it gets these three points right, which was important. We saw that from the previous slide, but now it's making mistakes on these points. Okay. So what's going to happen is you're going to repeat this process. Okay. Every time you train a new um, decision tree stub, you're going to check what are the points that I'm messing up the most from my history of previous classifiers. Okay. And then I'm going to try and get them right. Okay, and we continue to do that for a number of iterations. So in the next iteration, we will care a lot about these points. And we see that we get them right now, but then we make a mistake on these points and we continue, um, we continue in this way. This is the output from the final model. I've trained 20 decision tree stubs. So this output is the output from, from our, our final step here. It's basically uh, the weighted vote from all 20 my different um, my different um, classifiers. So uh, f x um, theta and theta for my final model is the combined parameters of all the de different decision trees. It's going to say um, take all the weighted votes. Start with the first model weighted by its lambda. get the output from the second model, F2, and weigh it by its, um, its lambda, lambda 2, and so on for all 20 of my models. So the 20th uh, decision tree stub, little model, um, theta 20, which describes that 20th decision tree. Um, and I basically take the combined votes from all of them. I weigh each vote by how good um, a classifier that specific model is. And I, I then look at 
um, the sign basically if the majority voted for plus one or minus one. Remember a single decision tree can just separate this whole input space here into just two regions. But now we've combined them to get a fairly complicated decision boundary running, um, running here for separating out class one and class minus one. So we've stepped through a fairly lengthy um, example, but there are still a few um, of the exact details that we miss in the algorithm. And that's what we'll look at in the next video.